Well, hello everyone. Dan Hurt with Dan Hurt Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. We are back here on Big Silver Creek in search of the big gemmy garnets. I'm looking for a gemstone today. I want a garnet big enough to facet, to make a real jewel out of for jewelry. We hope to find something big, but we know we're gonna find lots of smaller gems. Wish me luck, and I hope you enjoy. Now, if you watch my older videos, you may have seen a video or two taken at this site before. This site is known for its garnets. Up in the hills, just up there, you can actually find garnets still in the host rock. But down here on the river bars, there are garnets everywhere and lots of them. Everything from, you know, microscopic powder up to the biggest I think we found was about three quarters of an inch across. That being said, it wasn't a jemmy one. The jemmy ones are typically the smaller ones, but we're hoping to get lucky. I got the boys here today. Wave boys. Dana's walking up from below after some scouting. And of course I'm here. We're gonna be using the gem sieves in the river and seeing what we can find. Alex has already found his first treasure. That one there is, oh, not quite an eighth of an inch across, but a nice jemmy garnet. Now walking around this beach, the sands between the, the big cobbles are just loaded, and I mean loaded in garnets. I probably have a thousand garnets in my hand right now. Most of them are small, some of them are mid-sized, the odd one is big. We're going to dig buckets and buckets and buckets of that stuff. We're going to sift it out to different sizes and then use the gem sieves to see if we can find that one gemstone that's nice and big and beautifully gemmy. So Dana and the boys will be filling up buckets for me using the quarter inch Arbor Fabricating Classifier, the world's best classifier, link below for a 10% discount. Once they bring me the buckets, quarter inch minus, I will be separating the material with a 1 8 inch classifier. So I have minus 1 8 and plus 1 8. And I'll be using the gem sieves separately with those two classifications. Hopefully we find a good one in the quarter inch size. Now Dana and Evan are digging some buckets for me. I'm gonna find a nice rock. There's one. And set myself up with the gem sieve. Now my gem sieve, also known as a Saruka here, has a screen that's about a 1 16th inch mesh in it. So I'm gonna put the 1 8 inch classifier on top. I'm going to pour the material in. That's not quite enough. Sift it down so that the eighth inch plus is still in the classifier. The eighth inch minus is in the gem sit. I see big ones in here already. Woohoo! That's not enough material to sieve, so I'm gonna go back and get some more. Okay, I got a good gem sieve full. Sitting right on top right now. Oh, I'm liking it. Okay, so with the gem sieve, it is important that you have it mostly full. That helps you when you're flipping it. I like my gem sieve to have a bit of a loose sieve on it. A lot of people like them right tight. Um, we have a high volume of heavies here, so I don't mind it filling into a bit of a bowl at the bottom. The trick with the gem sieve is we have to concentrate all the heavies on the very bottom of the sieve. The way we do that is we put it in the water and we pulse it up and down. As you pulse it, water gets forced through the sieve from below, opening up all of the sand, spreading it out, letting the heaviest stuff fall first. The heaviest stuff ends up on the bottom. But it's on the bottom all the way across the bottom. We now need to concentrate it in the middle. We do that by rocking it. Right at the height of the surface, right at the surface of the water, we rock it side to side, and then pulse again. Rock it and pulse. Rock it and pulse. Rock it and pulse. Then we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. 
and do it again. Rock it and pulse. Rocking it brings it into a line in the center. Pulsing lets those heavies fall in that line. We then rotate it 90 degrees and do it again, and it takes that line and condenses it to the center. One thing I'm noticing is there's far too many garnets here. I'm just gonna have a red bottom right all the way across. I'm not gonna have it concentrated in the middle. There's just so many garnets. Okay, there we go. It should be all at the bottom. I can now go flip this. Now you need a big flat area, so I'm gonna use this rock to flip on. And the more times we flip on one spot, the better area you get for flipping it. So hopefully, over time, we get a perfect spot here. This sieve didn't have enough material in it. I should be much fuller than this, so I really should have had more, but we're gonna start off with this one. Make sure you drain out any excess water before you flip it. And here we go. It's important you flip it towards you too, not away. Just like that. And there we go, an absolute red bed. I could have done a better job getting it to the center, but hey, that's still pretty good. Nice garnets. We can now take carefully that layer of garnets and just that layer, no more, there's a handful of garnets. Later on, I'll take the leftovers from this, this bottom part here, and I'll throw it all back in the gem sieve and do it one more time, because I only got about 90% of those garnets out of there. And if I do it again, I can get another good load out of the stuff that's left over. Let's go do the bigger stuff now. Now we're gonna work with the eighth to quarter inch material. This is where the big garnet should be. Again, I should have more material than this. This isn't quite enough to fill my gem sieve but we'll go with it anyways. I see one right now sitting on top. Ah, uh, it's brown. It's not jemmy. It's important to tip it on its side when you uh, are done and drain out that water so it solidifies. So when you flip it over, it all stays together. I need a new rock for the bigger stuff. And here we go. Ugh. Kind of sloppy because of where I was. There's the area of garnets. The bigger ones are mostly brown or black garnets. You can see that little area. I need a better spot. That's a terrible spot to flip. But I do see a few jemmy ones in there. Grab that area. We'll put it in a bucket to go through later and find out how many, like that one, are jemmy. That's a terrible place to flip. I need a better place. Dana just called me over to have a look at her shovel full. It is insane. It is a shovel full of red. Nice spot. Let's hope there's some big ones in there. Just looks like a salmon rope, fish rope. Fish eggs, exactly. Yeah. I brought the camera over for this flip because it could be incredible. What I saw going through, wow. One, two, three. Oh. Where's the reveal? Woo. It broke up a lot on me, but I'm gonna have to do this one two or three times to get it all. There's so much it migrated everywhere, but I'll take the majority of the middle, put it all back in. We'll probably get three flips out of this before we get most of it. So we were that was what we were doing over there. Yeah, we'll get the rest. We'll flip it again. You hold this Ev right there. And here's flip two of that same load. Look at that. Let's do a third flip of this one. Flip number three.
getting a bit better at getting them all in the center. This was a nicer one. One problem is when I have just so much material with so many garnets, the center ring often just migrates outwards. It's just so much of it. But there, that was a, a lighter load and we got it in the center nicely. I can just harvest that little bit and any others that sort of migrated out will get when we redo the pile. Now, as I said earlier, I like that loose mesh when I'm dealing with high volumes of garnets. But when you're only dealing with small amounts, you're trying to get just the very heavy, like just a small amount of heavies out of gravel, a rigid screen like this one does work better. So for the coarse stuff on this one, because there's not as much in the coarse material, the quarter to one eighth, I'm gonna use my coarse screen and see if it does a better job. I saw some big ones go in there and they look jemmy. Much nicer job. Let's see what the little bullseye in the middle of that looks like. And here we go. Nice little bullseye here. Some of these are amazing. Let's get that on the other camera. So here is the eight to quarter flip. And you can see there are lots and lots of oversized garnets in this one. These are all bigger than one eight. And around here we also have lots of these brown garnets. The big, big ones are mostly brown and opaque. Ooh, look at that guy. Uh, but they are still garnets. Nice. Look at that one. That is incredible. Right from one side to the other, all red. And in the center of this, it's garnets down an inch, inch and a half. There we go. We, we got an inch, an inch of garnets in the center here. And that's a feature of my domed screen is that it concentrates this center bit really thick in the heavies. And that's why I like it for taking these volumes because we want volume today. If you only had like half a dozen little garnets that you wanted to get, a rigid screen would be much better. Nice. Ev, you having fun? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. There, shows you the perfect bullseye in the center. All the heavies right in one spot. Look at the glow on that guy. Wow, that's amazing. So we had a pretty nice spot there that we were digging and we just took a lunch break. During our lunch break, I'd walk down and do a bit of scouting. So I'm going down to the point down here to see if possibly out on the point we see higher volumes or maybe even bigger ones. But I'm seeing them everywhere I walk right now. Such a beautiful August day out here. Love getting to spend time with my family, gem hunting like this. They're not so much into the gold hunting that I kind of do on my own, but they love the gem hunting. Now, just because I know people are wondering why gem sieving works, a lot of gems like garnets and diamonds and uh, peridot, uh, sapphires, those things, they're all generally heavier than the surrounding gravels and sands. So because they're heavier, when you're pulsing the sieve in the water, the water coming up through it loosens everything, lifts everything up, and the heaviest things, the gems, fall first, so they end up on the bottom of the sieve. The rocking is just a way to bring it all into the center. The pulsing brings it to the bottom. Then you flip the gem sieve over and you reveal what was on the bottom of the sieve because now it's on the top of the pile. If you're wondering why gem sieving works, there you go. So we decided to move and dig closer to the water's edge. The digging is more difficult because classifying wet, yeah, it just takes a bit more energy. But look at what we got. 
the entire bottom was covered. And there are some big ones in there. Like we got way more big garnets than any other sieve we've done so far. There's massive ones in there and this is still just the 1 8 minus. And I assume that's deep. <laughs> At least an inch deep of garnets. Wow. You excited? Yes. I'll do some more of the hard digging. You'll do some more of the hard digging. That is impressive. We should have been doing that all day. So even though there are bigger garnets here, we've been doing mostly quarter inch classifying today. I decided for this last bucket, uh, Alex has the half inch classifier so that we might get a few of the real big ones. The problem with the big ones here is they're not jemmy. They're all fractured, they're brown, they're not great. It's just the quarter inch and smaller that get really jemmy. But let's see if we can find something in the bigger stuff today. And Dana is on the richest ground we've found so far. I got a gem sieve to flip. Are you guys almost full of that bucket? Here we go. It's gonna be a good one. Oh yeah. One big handful of garnets. And I'll do all of this again. And this is a rock full of garnets. That's the host rock, it's a schist. Careful how you say that word. And garnets throughout. I think that will be up for auction on my website when this video comes out. Okay, this is gonna be an amazing flip. I know it. Let's see if I do it right. Uh, excess water off. Here we go. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. Oh yeah. Look at that red. There's big ones too. And it's really deep in garnets. Nice work, Alex, digging this one. Handful of big garnets. Okay, and let's just do my whole pile one more time to get everything else out of it. And here's the last quarter inch flip of the day. We have some nice garnets in there. Not all that many. All of these black things in the middle are actually garnets, but we're looking for the jemmy ones, the red jemmy ones. And there's only a few of them. Into the bin they go. So we figured for the last bucket here, we actually put in the half inch stuff to see if we could find anything big. There isn't very much big here that is any kind of quality, but let's see, let's hope. We gotta make a bigger flat area up. And. So in here, I see a chip of garnet that can go in. I see another, oh, ah, it's falling. Ah, another big garnet, but not really jemmy. Sort of an orangish garnet over here. Nothing really jemmy. Here's one, a garnet. A lot of these big black things are garnets, but just absolutely brown, opaque, nothing special. There's one, yeah, there's a chip of garnet. Well, I got one more flip to do of the bigger stuff, and we'll see. the last flip of the day. 
Wish me luck. I lost a lot of it over the edges. Oh well. Okay, there's a nice one. Oh, there's another nice one. Little bit jimmy. Little bit jimmy. They're not great though. There's one. What's this? Nope, that's nothing. There's a nice garnet. No, 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 no. No big jemmy guys though. There's a garnet. Got one there. Yep. Maybe, maybe. Throw it in. Yep. Oh, I missed it. And that be it. There's a garnet still in its host. How pretty. Now, if you want to purchase some of our garnets, you can on my website, www.danherdprospecting.com, in the store. Thanks for coming along on our adventure here. If you liked the video, please leave that thumbs up. Leave a comment below. I love reading them. Big, big thanks to my patrons out there. Because of you, I get to make these road trips and make these videos. You guys are awesome. And if you haven't subscribed already, I hope you like what you saw enough to subscribe. Until the next one, everyone. What a beautiful day. Bye.